Alright, uh, I'm going to start by doing a little, not tutorial, but just like an overview of uh, some of the editing that I did. Uh, this is using Adobe After Effects CC. Uh, it started out with like a blank canvas, uh, kind of like, kind of like this. This is a blank canvas, there's nothing here. Um, you can just type stuff like, like this, and then you can start minimal. Um, let's see. I'll start a new um, solid. Right there. Good enough. Uh, click on it. Uh, generate uh, gradial ramp. Right there. Oh, something like that. Um, just add things in there. I can do stuff like that. Um, just changing things up. There you go. Uh, you can change colors of stuff. Like so. This one you could add like a, let's go over here and add glow. Adds a little glow to that, see that? You can do all kinds of cool things. Right there. Now you can also scale that up if you wanted. Like so. Anyways, let's uh, get rid of that. Um, we're going to start with... Uh, The main project where I did the logo. Uh, see, we're gonna that. This is just a camera controller right there. That's really nothing. It's just a null object, which means I can control it and do anything you want with it. First one we're gonna start with is uh, solid. We started black solid where we went to uh, layer, new solid, and then we added that same gradient ramp that I told you earlier, and I just did that. So that's okay. But then we also changed, uh, added some stuff to it like a background uh, then I just change the the mode for it and that's how it looks and you can kinda see where I'm going with this daughter in the background is going crazy um, what you're doing is this overlaying but if you switch the modes here you're gonna lose the light I'll show you just like that uh, go back to add what that does is just like transparency of the layer right here above it. Um, what that's going to do is going to like allow you to peek through it. Um, kind of like a tint on a window. Um, something like that. Then you got to add more stuff to it. Um, this is the logo part. You can't see it because I didn't move it on the timeline. There it is. Right there. Uh, what you'll see what I'm doing here on these, uh, um, how the letters do that, so. Uh, what you do with a comp, though, is, uh, this is a composition, uh, it's also a pre-comp. Uh, what you do with that is, uh, it's like tucking all these things away in a different file, um, to, well, to make it less messy and to make a lot of stuff work. Some effects need to be pre-composed, uh, in order for them to work. These other elements are just, like, from, um, uh, action essentials or whatever, whatever stuff you, other uh, products you buy, that's like sparks, fire, um, blood splatter, and all this other stuff. So see, that's just smoke right there. You see the smoke going. That's all it is. Um, that you can switch screen mode for all that stuff too, and just change it. You can even change the color of the smoke. Uh, 
Uh, vignette is just uh, some fancy term for putting like a shade around the outside, giving it the uh, putting your view or the viewer's eyes like more toward the middle. Uh, same thing with uh, the dust. It's just more stuff. See, you got particles in the air now. Um, I got a lot of stuff like that. A lot of it's done. Uh, just like putting smoke in front of a camera with a black background and all you do is just cut out the black or just screen that out if it's not already uh, pre-matted. Flare is just right there, just the flare. Um, camera movement uh, just adds a camera, see? And that's where this one down here is the controller for that camera. So you just uh, link this, uh, link the camera with this one. You just pick whip it down to right here like so and that'll follow that one. Just like shoe. Uh, color correction is just uh, it's just another adjustment layer. Watch it darken the image. Uh, sharpening curves. Uh, it's going to give it a little more contrast. Deep in some of the colors. Bingo. No, that's not the only one. <laughs> You'll see where we did some of these shadows under the lettering here. How we got the cracks in there and how we're getting it to like um, materialize on. Uh, title shine. That's just uh, where you see the stuff. Kind of like the DC comic one on you see on TV where it does this. See where it shines right some certain parts. I'll show you how to do that. Um, let's see, it's all done with the same same text. Text, uh, just start from there and you build up. Uh, put that one away, you take the same uh, copy, you build that one up a different way, you lay that up, that on top of it and change the mode. Uh, just changing the mode using the same thing over and over, the same picture, and changing it as much as you could. I'll show you that. Uh, just, just These are just other copies on top of each other just to make it um, pop a little bit more. Uh, there's like a fast blur tint. Uh, fast blur is just um, just a blur. That's it. Uh, these are all separate controls for the color correcting and stuff for the blue to the orange. I see the blue and the orange using a lot of uh, uh, movie posters. Um, this is that contrast, you know, the protagonist, antagonist. Uh, they're going to be using orange and the blue. They always seem to uh, use that those color schemes um, that's right there then we can use our central zombination that'll pop up right under the logo right here see right there right. I'll get rid of that right there let's get them Shadow right there is use drop shadow, like radio shadow. If you turn that off, you'll see the shadow disappear. Bingo! On, off, on, off. So that's simple, some of the stuff. A lot of it you could do right through here on uh, layer styles. And you could do a uh, drop shadow, inner shadow, bevel, all that other cool stuff. Now, how did we get the texture? Well, that's kind of simple. Um, we'll just go into the logo one here. We'll go over and open up right here. Or you can just take it and double click it right there. Uh, if we go into that one, uh, this is just used as a guide layer, which you see right here. That's nothing really important. It's just like from a different, uh, different pre comp. Put right there, and it's just used as like um, a reference. Uh, these are all the same copies of the same thing. Uh, called logo. I don't know. They got the ice background, so I guess I could have just called it logo ice. But uh, we put fast blur. Same thing on that one. Uh, radio shadow. You'll see it again. Radio shadow again. But then we'll see. If we can turn some of these off. Uh, this is just um, no background. So if you do that. Now uh, you got the background, it's a regular picture put into the screen. Say so we could just take that and move it around, whatever which way you want. Uh, we could actually take it and um, rotate it. 
just like so. Um, anything you want to do with it, really. So, we put the shadow on, but shadow is just basically the comp. Um, well, it's getting a little more in here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, what it is, so let me open up the main thing here. Now, see, all it is is just this. That's all it is. Um, just typed out NCZN. I use a uh, broken type font, which I got from defont.com. Um, you pre-compose that. Uh, you go to pre-compose. Uh, wait, no, layer. Pre-compose down at the bottom. And you move them all into their own, all the attributes into a different uh, pre-comp. I do that. This map movie is made from a, a, a layer where you add a linear wipe to it, uh, some curves. And basically this is all it does. It just goes from right to left. And you can use the black and white as your uh, alpha mats or your luma mats, whatever you want to do. You can even invert them, which is shown right here. Luma mat inverted. So what you're doing is just taking colors, um, not the colors, but the black and white, and the black is going to be cut. So if you watch it go, you get kind of the idea of what's going on here. Um, we'll close this one here. And then uh, what you do is you duplicate it and put it right up on top. Or not duplicate it, but put the mat on top. Um, you go right here to Luma Mat. Actually, let's put, turn it off to show you. Right there, see how it is like that? Threshold is just black and white. It doesn't distinguish, it's just a black and white. So that's all it does. So you see it go across right here. Looks like uh, kind of like a sun. Whoa. Hey, I can make something out of a sun doing a solar flare. Interesting. I didn't even think about that. Um, what you do is you... Uh, you want the letters to go from right to left, so you want to invert that. Yeah, you just experiment with it too a few times. And then see, that's what happens. It just follows the mat from the one above it. And see, it turns it off over here. So, um, You do that, and this is where all the fun begins. You can do a lot of stuff with this. You could invert this with a different mat, and you can pre-compose. What you do is you pre-compose these two. Put them into another one, duplicate them, and use the one as an alpha mat where you use the screen. All this is right here, I'll turn this off. It's just the back ice background with color, uh, gradient ramp, CC image wipe, just kind of like brightens it up and makes it go dim certain ways. Um, you do that, uh, you put it right between them. And then you do alpha mat, and that's where the, it's going to take the alpha from the picture and then put it into the logo. So now the logo is surf uh, surface is with the ice in the background. See that? I can cut all this out. So it's actually, if I was to put it like a movie back here, a different kind of picture, um, that's where it'll work. It'll go right up on top of that, no problem. Actually, here, let me show you. Let's see, Daisy folder. Actually, do that. Uh, let's see, I'll take this one. It's like that, see that? How that works? Uh, it's just right on the bottom of it. That's all it does. Okay, now that you got that, you can even do some more fun stuff with this. You could reverse the letter, and you could just use the shine where it comes on, and meet it halfway between each one. And I'll show you here. So you pre-compose all these again. Uh, select them all. Uh, layer pre-compose. Give it a good name. Um, Always give your precomps name, you just can change it right here, hit enter, change the name. Uh, stuff like that, no problem. 
Uh, you can turn the shadow ones on, which are just going to change the letters, and you're going to drop the opacity, the the ability to view through it. Turn them all on. It's going to look like it's going to give it a drop shot if you really look at it. Um, I changed a lot of these uh, resolutions to uh, <laughs> see a little bit clearer, or so I could it'll render quicker. So when you're going like this, it's gonna render better. That should be able to view it a little bit better. And on auto, now it'll uh, go at its own pace and make it, make it look as best like it could. Then you take all these and you break control those. those. And drop shadow is actually pretty cool in how you do some of this stuff. Um, I'll make it singular by itself. Put that there. Open shadow. You can drop that. Hit T for opacity. See, this is the opacity, the ability to see through it. Um, you mess with that a little bit. I'll just put it back to 80 before I forget. Um, then you drop the radio shadow on. There you go. It just takes it and then kind of makes it a shadow instead. Uh, dropping the opacity. You can do that even with a person. Or an object. A car, building, whatever. Give it a shadow. Um, then you layer that three times and you change the mode to multiply. See how that looks? You got the shadow coming on. Uh, it's just duplicating on itself. Change the name. See, there's the shadow right to Nerima. And then you just precompose all that and just bring it to your main comp. Now, the title shine. Um, go past the flare, color correction. Title shine. This is where it gets kind of complicated. Actually, a lot of stuff in reverse. So you open that up, open that up. Um, it goes all the way back to what your main one was. Remember this one, the main one. Well, that's all it is. So you're gonna bring that into a new comp. You go up here, you drag it, find it, and you drag it into a new comp right here. And then you lay it right on top of its uh, top of each other. Right there, see that's all it, that's all it is. Uh, I think the top one has a bevel and boss on it. Or a simple choker. Kind of takes the texture away, see. Texture's kind of gone. But then uh, what you do is just duplicate your footage. And when you put the alpha in inverted, it, it'll like reverse it. Uh, like the highlights where the cracks are. See. Now what I'm going to do after this one is I'm going to tint it all because I'm going to be using the white as a luma. See that? That's where you get the shine on the words. You're wondering how am I going to get shine off the black? That's where I said where you're going to put a tint and then you're going to use the alpha um, or the luma off the white. Which is, yeah, right here, tint. You put the tint on it and it turns it white. You can barely see it. Until you do this and see, he, I turned all that stuff white. Nah, don't worry about the camera and the null object. That's just the camera. See the square around right here? That's just the camera. Camera um, container. But it's actually connected to this one. So you pre compose these, give it a label. And then you add your effects, glow, tint, um, change the color of your tint, and you duplicate that three times uh, before you put the effects on, of course. But on the bottom one, you're going to put the glow, um, give it, the, see this what gives it this real shiny white part, is the glow. 
and you of course add add which is gonna just gonna pop it out a little bit more I could use screen but it's gonna dull it a little bit you see that already is changing from that uh, so we'll add put it back to add see it kinda brightens it up a little bit more so you duplicate that and it's gonna view each one through itself like putting three windows on top of each other with each one a decoration on it more or less so um, that's that's all you did that's how you do it and you just put all the stuff in you add your camera movement the camera controller hit U for the keyframes I'm gonna close that so what you do uh, you just take that and you move it how you want to uh, spin the camera you put the keyframes and you can do a real slow um, on your Y coordinates here. Just make it real slow on the Y. See how slow that's going down here on the Y? Make it go real slow, and that's what gives it that slow pan. But then you can speed it up right here, then slow it right here. That's just a point of finessing your keyframes and practicing. And your camera, that doesn't matter where your camera's at. I mean, you can put a whip on top here, it doesn't matter where you have it. It's just stuff you remember to do in uh, sequence. Um, as you're going through it, so. So that's that. That's on that one.